Will you please join with me now in a moment of prayer? Creator God, thank you for your deep love and grace that enfolds and embraces your beloved children of all ages. In this time of worship, let us be filled, renewed, and inspired by your love. And let us continually listen for your call to draw the circle wider in loving care and service to your children worldwide. Amen. Today, as we continue our exploration of the familiar and important stories of Jesus from the Gospel of Mark, we have heard that familiar passage we often lift up when we celebrate a child's baptism here at church. Luke and Matthew both contain versions of this story as well. One day, Jesus is busy teaching a group of adults, and some people show up with their kids. This was seen as an interruption by the disciples. I'm sorry, this is an adult Bible study. No children allowed. Now, the disciples aren't exactly acting outrageously or intentionally trying to be mean. It was probably a societal norm that children wouldn't typically be allowed to intrude upon a teacher and their adult students. But Jesus, of course, is having none of this. Don't send them away, welcome them. Let the little children come to me. Here we have yet another example where the disciples, bless their hearts, are trying to define who's in and who's out. They keep trying to assume the role of bouncers at the Jesus Club. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah, it's a role that Jesus never asks them to assume. So once again, we see Jesus just obliterate their tired, confining, and unjust boundaries. And once again, both the disciples and all of us who are hearing, hearing and studying this gospel message have an opportunity to have our hearts and minds opened to others who have been excluded at times. Jesus' followers don't just have to be adults. Jesus seems to be into intergenerational family ministry. Think about what happens when he welcomes and includes children. He also welcomes and includes those people who were bringing their children to him. And I'm willing to bet that many of those people were women. Maybe not exclusively, but mothers, grandmothers, aunts, they were often the primary caregivers for children in Jesus' day, and of course in many cultures throughout history. So from very early on, the circle of Jesus' disciples and followers was much wider than just a group of 12 guys. After welcoming these children and their families, Jesus uses this moment to teach those present that kids are the ones who are ready to receive the kingdom of God. Now, children had no social status or real power. And in the ancient world, they weren't even really considered full persons in their own right until they reached adulthood. So in lifting up children as the example of worthiness in this moment, Jesus is once again lifting up those who were seen as lowly, those without privilege and power. He is demonstrating once again that the kingdom of God belongs to those who have been excluded, marginalized, diminished by society. And if we want to be ready to receive the kingdom too, Jesus said, we should all be like little children. I love this message. <laughs> Somehow being more like a child might help us be more open to God's grace, open to the reorienting of our individual and collective lives towards the love of God and the love of neighbor open to the deeper and broader understanding of what it means to be one human family, 
all children of our creator, all siblings to one another. So how shall we become like a little children? How do we embody a childlike faith? Now, most of us probably don't remember what it was like to be an infant, but many of us do know what it is like to care for one. So let's imagine for a moment. Think about how radically dependent a tiny, tiny child is on their parent or caregiver. As children grow, they become more and more independent, of course, but we all begin life relying on others for our every basic need. And not only do babies need the obvious things like food and clothing and lots and lots of diapers and bathing and sheltering and so on, they also need to simply be held. Close human contact is essential for our healthy development as people. So perhaps part of childlike faith is recognizing our radical dependence upon God, our creator, upon the life-giving, life-renewing, and resurrecting love of our creator who has loved us from the beginning and loves us still. Perhaps part of childlike faith is also recognizing that this divine love is not something that we can hoard or use to exclude and control, but is instead a love that each and every one of us was birthed from, was born into, and are continually embraced by our whole lives long. Perhaps childlike faith also calls us to remember that our mutual interdependence is necessary for us to survive and thrive. There are times in life when we find ourselves having to rely on others more than we want to. I'm guessing some people have had those moments. Perhaps it is in those times it might be helpful for us to remember that it is okay to be held okay to be held by others, cared for by others. And when we are called to be the caregiver, which we, many of us have probably also experienced, there are others who can help us with that. We don't need to go it alone. It's okay to be held. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need that good news. You know, sometimes I have heard people talk about childlike faith as if it's some sort of unquestioning belief. But I find that problematic because childlike openness and wonder and awe and accepting our own limited knowledge and those kinds of things, those are all really good things. But unquestioning obedience to a particular and often narrow theological framework, we all know that does all sorts of damage. It also makes me wonder if people who view childlike faith as unquestioning belief have actually spent much time with children. The kids I know ask tons of questions <laughs> all the time. <laughs> they push back on things that don't make sense to them. They want to figure out how things work. They want to know why things are the way that they are. They definitely want to know why certain rules are in place. And as they grow, kids, of course, learn to reason, to sort things out, and to make sense of the world around them. And in doing so, they make their lives and their faith their own. For us, God's children of all ages, a childlike faith can be reasonable, investigative, curious, and oh yes, fun. Childlike faith can be a wholehearted embrace of God's love and God's beloved ones. It can be a willingness to take the journey, to step out in faith with our curiosity, with our questions, and to go on this adventure of discipleship, finding out where it will lead as we go. 
When Jesus welcomed those children and their families that day, the disciples and everyone else present learned that following in the way of Jesus isn't about being a gatekeeper. It's, a being, it's about being a door opener, a community builder, and someone who embraces our neighbors of all ages and stages. They also learned that the well-being and faith of the next generation was just as important as their own. You know, part of our collective discipleship as a church community is still to embrace young people and help foster their faith development and support their well-being. Today's story invites us to consider the ways in which we welcome and include, support and care for, and bless real, live, actual children, just as Jesus did. This involves expanding our concept of family, I think. The children who are our children, our responsibility as a church, are the world's children. They are the children in our immediate families, as well as all of the children here in our church community. They are the children in our city, in our nation, and yes, across the globe. The well-being of children is a good marker of a society's health. And as both a nation and a world, we know we still have some work to do to ensure that children are getting their basic needs met, getting a good education, getting the physical and mental health care that they need. And their caregivers and immediate families need our communal support too as they raise their kids. The safety and well-being of the world's children ought to be our top priority. But unfortunately, children often bear the burden of political conflicts and wars and often misplaced priorities of adults. I think we have to continue to strive to do better for the next generation. The challenges of the world's children are many, but there is also a lot that we can do to make a difference for children right here at church and right here in our local community. As a church, it is part of our call to nurture the faith and development of young people and to provide them a safe and welcoming place to learn and grow, explore and experience caring community. Each generation is always called to care for and help foster the faith of the next generation. It is our job to teach them about God's deep love for them to encourage them to love and care for their neighbors, to help them discover how they can contribute to their community, and to help them learn and grow in their faith as they grow older. You know, over the years, I've had conversations with our Sunday school teachers, and some have said, oh, I don't know if they learned anything today. It was a little bit chaotic. And I said, you know, if they learn that God loves them, that we love them, and that they're called to love, then that's enough. If that message got through in any way, today's a success. The details, you know, they'll pick them up over time. It's okay. You know, in this stewardship season, as we look ahead towards another year of our collective ministry, I would encourage, encourage all of us to keep this in mind as we prayerfully consider how we will support our church in 2025. Your financial giving as well, as well as your time and volunteer efforts make possible our ministries with and for children and youth and their families. Educational and fellowship ministries like Sunday school and nursery care, children's choir, vacation Bible school, kids night out, which of course is actually parents night out. <laughs> it's both, it's both youth activities, confirmation classes, and other ministries all take leadership, time and energy, creativity, and of course, funding. So I want to thank you in this moment for your ongoing support of our youth and children's ministries here at Bayshore Church. It does make a difference. And if you want to get to know some of our church kids better and help support them and their families, we would especially welcome new Sunday school or kids' night out helpers. 
If that's something you might be interested in, please talk to me and I can tell you more about what, it is, what is required to volunteer and what it's like. I kind of liken it to lifeguarding in some ways. And remember that your giving, your volunteering, your reach goes beyond the walls of our church too. Your support of our various mission projects reaches out into the broader community and makes a difference in the lives of families here in Long Beach and beyond. Right here in town, our church supports organizations like Precious Lamb Preschool that provides free early education to kids whose families are experiencing or transitioning out of homelessness. Your support of Christian Outreach in Action makes a difference too in providing for families. And just this summer at VBS, we also brought a bunch of diapers in for their weekly diaper bank. That's something they do that is a real critical need here in our community. And every year, several families in need are supported with essential items and gifts of care at Christmas. These are just a few examples, there are more. And they are multiplied when you consider the ways so many of you, and I know this is true, volunteer in the community and across the globe. Thinking of you, Justin, going to Kenya and taking group with you every year. Jesus welcomed children, embracing them and their families as much as anyone who came to him to learn about God's love, to be healed, to be cared for, and to be led in the way of the love of God and neighbor. And in doing so, he invited us all to embrace a childlike faith of openness, inclusion, curiosity, joy, and wonder as we seek to follow in his way of love. So keep it up, kids. Amen. <laughs>